never throw your pineapple peels away again. I'm going to show you how to make a delicious fermented pineapple beverage with just three ingredients you probably have in your kitchen right now. I'm Trent Musho and you're watching The Brew Show. Stick around and learn how you can make this tasty tapache at home. Tapache is a fermented pineapple beverage that originates from Mexico. It's usually made from the peel of pineapples and is sweetened with either piloncillo or brown sugar and seasoned with cinnamon sticks or cloves. This is a perfect recipe for somebody who's never brewed or made fermented items before. It's pretty foolproof, you don't need specialized equipment, and you only need three ingredients to get started. Tapache is a great drink on its own, as it has 2-3% alcohol and a ton of probiotics that are great for your gut health. It's also great mixed with a little bit of beer or as a mixer in a cocktail. I'm going to show you one of my favorites at the end of this video. But now, let's get into the recipe. For this recipe, I'm making one gallon of tapache, and I'm using this fermenting jar. But feel free to use whatever you have. A pitcher would be great for this, or a large mason jar, or if you have a fermentation bucket, that would be great too. First thing you're going to need is a whole pineapple. For this recipe, we're only going to be using the peels. This is a zero waste recipe, which is why this is such a good drink to learn how to make. Start by cutting off the top of the pineapple. Did you know you can actually save the top of the pineapple and plant it and it'll grow into a new pineapple? It's as easy as sticking in some dirt and giving it some water. And with a little luck, you'll see some new growth out the center of the plant. Next, slice off the peel from around the perimeter of the pineapple and save the pineapple to eat later. I don't like to use the core because it can cause some bitterness, so I usually just toss that in my compost. Next, we add the piloncillo. Piloncillo is unrefined cane sugar and it's usually formed into a small cone like this. You can find it at most grocery stores, but if you can't, you can just use brown sugar, about one cup. Now we add the spices. I'm going to be using cinnamon sticks, but you can also use cloves. Toss in the pineapple, sugar, and spices. Top up with water, and shake it up. Don't worry if the piloncillo doesn't dissolve completely. It will dissolve in a few hours. Now just cover your fermenter with a kitchen towel or napkin and a rubber band to secure it. This allows CO2 to escape and nothing gets in. For mason jars, I like these fermenting tops that act like an airlock. Set it somewhere that's room temperature and out of direct light for about three to five days. No yeast is needed because there's microorganisms all over the peel that act as our yeast. And the sugar from the peel and CO feeds those yeasts to create alcohol and probiotics. Check on it every day or so to see how it tastes. If you like it sweet, let it ferment less. If you want more funkiness, let it ferment longer. Occasionally you might see some foam. If you want, you can scoop it out, but it won't hurt anything. I like the taste after four days. It's a perfect balance of sweet and funky. So now it's time to bottle. Here I'm bottling a half batch recipe that I made earlier this week. If you ferment it in a bucket, then you can just use the spigot at the bottom to fill your bottles. But for pitchers and other containers, you need to strain out the rinds and spices. Once you've done that, you can carefully pour into the bottles. I recommend using either swing top bottles or these kombucha bottles. Kombucha bottles are my favorite because you can see the pressure on the cap and feel if it's firm, letting you know your bottles are ready to drink. If I ever buy kombucha, I just save the bottles so I can reuse them. You can also use bottles or caps if you have that equipment. After you cap them, let them sit for one to two weeks on the counter. This will give the remaining yeast and sugars time to ferment a little more and make carbonation. After one or two weeks, pop them in the fridge for a few hours, and then it's ready to drink. This tapache has taken on a gorgeous golden yellow hue. When I take a sip, I first taste a sour pineapple flavor that is refreshing, tart, and juicy. And I get a slight funkiness that you might get from kombucha or other probiotic drinks. Then at the end, I taste those warm spices from the cinnamon that make this a perfect drink as we start to head into fall. As I mentioned, this is pretty low alcohol, so if you want an extra kick, here's a quick cocktail recipe. What sounds better with tapache than tequila? Start with one ounce tequila, pour in your tapache and give it a squeeze of lime. Then I garnish with a lime wedge. And enjoy. If you've never brewed beer, cider, or wine, you have to give this a try. It couldn't be an easier way to start your home brewing adventure. Let me know what other kind of ferments you want to see me make. And be sure to subscribe for more recipes and tutorials.